Okay, like I said before, I'm not able to select this specific line here in the Revit project environment. So I'm back into the, um, the mass element uh, family. And we're going to work from there, and then we'll import the whole um, piece of geometry that we create into Revit. So let's go ahead and get started with Dynamo. Um, and uh, I can bring up the the master map that I'm going to use. So our first part is to uh, make a new point um, on a path, the new points on that path. Um, currently, you can see we only have four points, and we really want to make ribs all along here. So we want to divide that off. In this example, I divide it off into 20 points. So we're going to go through this first element um, step by step. And we'll do that by getting Dynamo up on the screen. And we need to select a model element. Select, um, maybe it's select edges. I don't think it's edges. I don't think it'll allow us to do that. Let me select model element. I use this one. I don't know if select edges will work. I don't think I could. I had to go back and grab. It wasn't flexible enough to do that, I think, when I went through that. So we need the model element, and we need to grab the face. So we need a select face element. And um, this actually runs pretty fast, so we can actually leave this in the automatic mode. And I'm going to go ahead and um, grab these two. So I'll go select model element, and I'll grab this line. I'll go back to Dynamo and select the face element. Come back over here and grab that. And go back to Dynamo. And now we actually can um, see our element. And we can actually spend most of our time working in the Dynamo environment um, instead of jumping back out to Revit. So we've got our we've got our face selected and our line. And we don't see any control points here. This is actually not really selectable for us because it's a piece of Revit geometry that we've imported. So the first thing we want to do is kind of divide that path up. Um, so I'm going to do divided path. Um, I've got to look for the right one here. Divided path, I think it's this one, curve and divisions. And we'll need a number. And we'll put 20 in here right away. And I'm sure there's a better shortcut for that. But let's go ahead and put the divisions in. Stick the element in. And we have a bunch of points, but we're not, or we have a divided path, but it's really not visible yet. But if I turn this off, we should still see the line there. No, we don't, actually. So we have a divided path, um, which is really not, I guess, a visual element. So I'm going to leave that off for a minute. Um, so we're going to go and grab divided, divided path. Oops, excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm looking at one screen. That's why I'm I'm doing that. <laughs> All right, so we got to feed the divided path in, and we get our points coming out. So now we have a visualization of each one of the uh, points along that line. And we can actually... Um, we're going to go back and make this into a curve because we want these points to be related to, we want to make these disks um, to a normal of this line. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get poly curve by points. We'll plug these points in. And once again, this is not as... I showed you before, this is not exactly as smooth as the NURBS curves, but it's um, it's each one of these points is there and then connected by a piece of straight line, I believe it is. Um, but it really doesn't affect because we're just using that to make actually a, a piece of construction. So now we've actually got our line divided off, and the 20 
the 20 neck, um, represents the number of ribs. So we could actually just change this to um, number of ribs, if that's how we wanted to think about it. And if we change this to 10, right, we're just going to see 10 points along there. And now you can see how that, that line gets jagged. And actually you can see how it changes and gets relatively smooth looking as we up the number of ribs that we're using. Okay, so now we want to move to the idea of finding these. And, and I had a really hard time going through this and finding the right functionality. But let's do a circle. Um, By center point and radius, just so you can see what the issue is here. If I if I wanted to make a um, a circle at every point, you'd notice that they are flat to the geometry, and we really want them to be perpendicular. So what we want to do is we want to actually find the planes at this point that are normal to that um, to that curve. So I'll leave that hooked up just for a reference, but we're going to quickly do something else here. We're going to make a um, a curve plane at parameter. Um, so, see you. Don't you like it when people have to talk as they type? Plane at parameter. And we have, so we feed this curve in. And let's see if what we get out of it. Just, we get one point, And it's probably hidden on the other side of that form. Let's just turn this off for just a minute. All right, there it is, hiding out in the back there. I'll just zoom in here. So you can see that I've um, I've got one plane right there highlighting, vertical or in alignment with our curve system, which is really delightful, but I've only got one of them, and I want 20 of them. So what I need to do is actually to create a series, and I'm going to use a code block for that. I'm going to double right-click and get a code block show up. And I'm going to go from zero because we always start at zero. And it's our way of making list um, to one. That's the full length of the curve. And then number, and we'll try X. I didn't do this the last time, but we'll see how that works. And we'll feed X being the number of increments that we want. And we'll feed this into that parameter. And now you'll notice delightfully all of our parallel or our normal lines have, or normal planes have shown up. So now we're really ready to create a little more sophisticated circle instead of the circle by radius. So we have a, an idea of, I'm going to just delete this now. We'll get rid of those circles. And we're going to use circle, circle by center point, radius, and normal. And I'm going to grab, so we have our center points, which are these, I believe. I think, hmm. I've got the wrong element. I don't want to use this. I want to use the plane. Delete. Sorry. I'll feed the plane in. And actually, now we see all of our circles. But now we actually need them to be larger in diameter. Um, we need them to be really huge. So I'm going to use a number. Oops. We don't really care how large they are as long as they're lar large enough to intersect with the form that we're going to create. So I'll put 20 in here right away. And we'll make that the radius. Now we have those huge circles. And I'll show you, we can now turn the face on. Because this is, I mean, the whole goal here is to get those disks to intersect this form. So we get all of our arcs generated. And it looks like we're coming up a little bit short here. Let's see what happens if I turn this up to 30. We really don't want, yeah, we want it to make sure it all bisects the full set of geometry of the form that we have. So it's more than generous. But right now we can't, we have a circle, but we don't have any solid to it. So we can't make any kind of intersection between the two forms. So one of the, the next thing we want to do is actually look at is taking these things and making them into solids. And we have an easy function for that. Um, it's called a surface by patch. So 
so if we a closed curve is a circle so if we plug that in now we have all those discs and maybe it's just fun to just stop for a minute and take a look at what we've got going on here so now we have this um, all of our geometry is now intersected by these discs so you can kind of see what's going on as far as squirrely areas where the beams are actually spaced farther apart because of the, the change in geometry with respect to the way the curve is shifting along um, this should work out fairly nicely. So now we can actually do an intersection of these geometry and get rid of all the busyness that's going on here. So I'm going to go and grab a geometry intersect. And there it is. And the other happens to be the surface. So I'm going to go back here and grab the surface. And we're going to have a we're going to have one we're going to have a problem here, and I've got to um, fix it. So let's. But we'll we're going to put that in, and we're going to put these pieces of geometry in. And I'm going to turn off. I'm going to turn all of these off. Because this one element that gets highlighted is the one piece of geometry that gets intersected. And you can see the blue line here. And it looks like probably it gets a little bit screwed up because this disk doesn't quite catch that piece of geometry in the normal plane. We won't worry about it, but what it'll do is it'll force this geometry not to have that sharp edge. Um, we could look at figuring out how to correct that later, but it's really not significant to our our project here. The problem we have though is that we're only doing it one time and we need to do it 20 times. So I'm going to get rid of the circle by plane radius just because this is just busy stuff on the screen. We know those radiuses are existing there and we've only got one highlighting right now and we really want 20 of them. So we need to keep repeating this geometry over and over again so it keeps doing the math as it goes through the form. So there's a, a list, we're going to make a list of repeated items. And I'm trying to see if it'll come up here pretty quickly. List of repeated items. So if I put in what is that other geometry now, and we know we have 20, we know we have 20 ribs, so we want to repeat it 20 times. Now we'll just put a, a watch box in here so you can see what's going on. We'll plug that in there. I could have just left that, but uh, <laughs> just showing you over here. So we have our list, and um, so the surface just keeps getting repeated and repeated one over the other, which isn't a problem. We're just going to plug this in, and then you'll see now that we have it, it's doing the math for all of those pieces of geometry as it moves through the whole thing. So I'll, I'll stop now because it's been a long section and we'll pick up on making beams out of it next.